Australians all, let us rejoice. Values, values, values. Come on down to Big Kim's Great Aussie Values Sale. Mateship, fairness, freedom. We've got more freedom than razor wire. And if you don't want our freedom, you're absolutely free to bugger off back to where you came from. So if you value our values, come on down to Big Kim's Value Packed Australia. Just stay off our bloody beaches, OK? <laughs> House, the program that asks the question, to avoid our great Aussie values being accused of racism, should fair dinkum be expanded to include dark and swarthy dinkum? <laughs> More news than the howling ghost of Pauline Hanson this week. Part-time immigration minister and full-time wind farm Amanda Vanstone <laughs> has accused Kim Beasley of xenophobia and fanning the racist fire. Cos it's her cake and she'll blow out the burning crosses herself, thank you very much. <laughs> As Australian TV gave itself a big tonguey for turning 50, John Howard saluted its contribution, saying, it's a wonderful medium for the sick and the lonely. <laughs> and a big hello to our target demographic. <laughs> Howard said he didn't think there was better quality free-to-air television than Australia's. Except America, which is where Australia's free-to-air television comes from. <laughs> the Competition and Consumer Commission has forced Uncle Toby's to stop saying its fruit roll-ups are made from 65% real fruit. They've also had to admit Toby's not really an uncle. <laughs> He's just some bloke mum picked up at the club. <laughs> yes, there's not much fruit in fruit roll-ups. At least us health nuts still have our toffee apples and cherry coke. <laughs> Sex bomb singer Tom Jones, the man who stayed faithful to his wife by only shagging other women, <laughs> apparently takes great pride in his personal hygiene. One girl claims Sir Tom likes to dip his private parts in Listerine mouthwash. <laughs> Sorry, Tom, that is unusual. <laughs> apparently it creates a great explosion in your mouth. <laughs> Here's my favourite sentence of the week from Sicily. A jealous nun set fire to a priest lover's house after finding him in bed with a married woman. <laughs> Holy smoke! <laughs> That's a six sin sentence. <laughs> He's the only priest who sits through confession going, ooh, I haven't done that one. <laughs> this is true. The priest is 70, the nun is 39. But to be fair, they have been together for almost 30 years. <laughs> News dodgy Uncle Willie. <laughs> a British mother has been caught trying to help her 11 year old son win the junior show jumping championships by drugging the horses of his rivals. <laughs> Witnesses claim they spotted Kim Bodines feeding what looked like peppermints to a number of ponies at the event. <laughs> Nothing suspicious about that. <laughs> Nothing worse than pony breath. <laughs> Kim said she was just giving the ponies something for their throat. They were a little horse. <laughs> it's going to get a lot worse. <laughs> but when one owner saw something fall from a pony's mouth, he found a sedative tablet on the ground, which means it was either doped or that pony is a drug mule. <laughs> Quite a woman. Friends say she's desperate for her son Josh to become a jockey. She's even forced him to take up smoking to stunt his growth. <laughs> it's lucky for Josh she was caught when she was. When your mum's that desperate for you to become a jockey and you're one year away from puberty, your testicles are on very shaky ground. <laughs> Shocking news this oh, week, oh no. shocking. Oh no. Do you know that Aussie, Aussie soldiers in Iraq have posted videos on the internet? That shocks me. I can't believe soldiers know how to use computers. <laughs> I swear to God, you know, in these photos they've got guns. Where did they get the guns? How did soldiers get guns? There's got to be an inquiry about it. Seriously. 
actually, and people were upset. The actually, the boss of the army, Peter Leahy, said that people that silly don't deserve to be in the army. Yeah, fair enough. Only sensible people deserve to be stationed in far-flung hellholes protecting people who are trying to kill them. <laughs> I, he said they might get sacked. Imagine that. You have to leave Iraq when winter's coming on to come to Australia for summer. <laughs> and it'll be a fate worse than death. <laughs> you know how much bloody publicity they've got out of this? A couple of videos, there's nothing on them. Do you know the weird shit I've been putting on YouTube for ages now? <laughs> no one's bloody given me any publicity whatsoever. <laughs> Look it up, Dave, use YouTube. I go off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to it. Joining me, Corinne and Dave, to throw some stones in the glass house tonight from the ABC's highest rating show of the year, where he got lucky, then died from rotten egg gas. Still better than the other way around. Reese Muldo! <laughs> and a Melbourne stand up siren, Terry Siakas! <laughs> All right, movers and shakers. First up, US photographer Jill Greenberg, whose new exhibition is very special. She got a bunch of two and three year olds, gave them lollipops, suddenly took the lollipops away, then snapped them crying. John Howard has spotted her obvious talent and made her the new boss of Centrelink. <laughs> Unfortunately, the shoot hit a snag halfway through when Jill ran out of lollipops. But she managed to get the same reaction by telling the kids their parents were really Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes. <laughs> Dave, you love a bit of culture. Is this art? No, I don't believe it is. I don't want to see kids crying. No. I don't even want to hear them crying. <laughs> they give me the shit. <laughs> Make a wonderful father. Yeah, no, I'll warm up to the task. <laughs> People are saying it's child abuse. I don't know that it's child abuse, just no. taking away a lollipop. Like, if the artist had taken the lollipop away and then belted the kid around the head with it, <laughs> that would be child abuse. But you know that at the end of that photo shoot, they would have got the lollipops back and they all would have been happy. Kids do crocodile tears and, you know, they're smiling again the next minute all the time. Oh, Chocolate the leaves. cynicism. It's not. I see it every day in aisle nine of the supermarket. <laughs> ah, and then you give them something off the shelf and they're fine. I mean, they live in the moment, kids. It doesn't mean in that moment they're not really, really sad. Yeah. Just, I mean, the next moment they're really happy, you know? I mean, yeah. But they're in the moment. Don't you also have to teach them about the real world and tell them that they can't always get what they want? Not when they're three. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not like, OK, and this is take well. them up the cross and go, you know, this is prostitutes. <laughs> <laughs> Guy over there, that's a junkie. See the guy on the tilt in the gutter? Yeah, life's going to be rough. You ready? <laughs> Stop crying! <laughs> I'm actually... Um... It'd, be good, it'd be good if they did that, though. Like, I mean, you know, like on the Wiggles, they swear, why won't Jeff wake up? Jeff's dead. <laughs> I'm actually... I've got, got a terrible one that I did once. This is like um, one of those, like, where you look back and just go, oh. This little kid came up to me, because I do play school, right? Mm, yeah. yeah. And he was like three, oh, tiny, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. And he came up to me and he goes, and he was so nervous and everything, because I was like, giant Reese off the telly, you know? <laughs> and he comes up and, he, and, he, and he's going, could I please... <laughs> and I went, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> like, just for a joke, like, just for a joke, like, just to go, like, you know. Because yeah, three-year-olds to... really get sarcastic. I realised that then. <laughs> <laughs> because by the time I had turned back, <gasps> shattered! <laughs> with the... <laughs> the good thing was, it turned out oh. it wasn't a kid, it was Anthony Kalia. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's a Seriously, people have been committing... I was, I was wondering about that eyebrow. <laughs> <laughs> the hairy arms. You know, you know what I think did commit child abuse was those photos of Celine Dion with the babies. Did you ever yeah. see those? No. It looked like Celine Dion was about to eat the baby. <laughs> and there was one where she had, like, this see through gauze thing on and put the kid in the gauze so it looked like... She was yeah. pregnant mm. with this child. Uh. It was the most disturbing thing. And it did look like she'd just swallowed a baby. Like, <laughs> Diana on you know. Yeah. 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 Dislocates a jaw and just babies slide down oh. her throat. That's how she stays young. <laughs> <laughs> she's very thin, though. She, I don't reckon she's ever eaten a baby. <laughs> very long. No, she eats them, but... <laughs> 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 she's 
is that baby bulimia or That's something? That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know that, that rumour will be on the internet by tonight. <laughs> no. there's, your, there's your Wawa story right there. <laughs> <laughs> Naomi Robson will be on a plane <laughs> to stop Selena Dion eating baby. <laughs> Our next mover and shaker is today tonight gelding Naomi Robson, <laughs> who's put her hoof in it over the story of six-year-old boy in Papua who's allegedly going to be eaten by cannibals. It's a blatant case of cookbook journalism. <laughs> Little Wawa could stay and be eaten or leave and fly home sitting next to Naomi. He asked his tribe if they'd like fries with that. <laughs> Still, even if they did save Wawa, they'd never get him through Australian customs. They'd have to stuff him in that big bin they have at the airport for foreign food. <laughs> Reese, you like a feed. Oh, is yeah. <laughs> Thank you for handballing this one for me. <laughs> is Naomi yeah. copping too much? Well, I heard there was a you know rumour on the internet that what they were going to do was put little Wawa down a mine. <laughs> uh, with a cannibal? Yeah, with some other guy. Yeah. You know, just you know, talk to them, send them down iPods and stuff. <laughs> I heard that they're not even cannibals and they yeah. don't even want to eat Wawa. <laughs> and that makes me angry. <laughs> you know what? I, I, watched, I watched Today, Tonight, the other night, and Naomi did a lot of... about the whole thing. She nearly teared up. She... Yeah, but I think that was just because she needed to burp. <laughs> <laughs> but she was talking about, we will get to the bottom of this story, I promise you. <laughs> and I was thinking... Naomi, if what's happening to Wawa really does trouble you, <laughs> maybe. Oh, like that is You've been hating this impersonation. <laughs> maybe she could go over there without a camera and just save him that way. Has she thought of doing that? Well, does I, she really need, does she only do good things if there's a camera on her? I love this, because she said, that they, 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 she got kicked out because she was there on a tourist visa. Yeah. And the official said, but she's actually a journalist, mm. which indicated to me that they've never seen today, tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fair enough that she got, you know, she got picked up on being there for a tourist visa and she got, you know, she got told off by the Indonesian authorities. That's, that's fair enough. She would have gotten into a hell of a lot more trouble if they'd actually looked into her boogie board bag. Yep. Um, <laughs> that what would did have she been have in there? <laughs> a knife and fork. <laughs> I, 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 I just... What was she going to do with Wawa when she brought him back to Australia? Was she going to take him to the Logies? Like, why? He would, he would be great at the Logies. I mean... Yeah, it would be like having Webster. Don't <laughs> 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 Teach him a few jokes. Oh, I just wish you didn't have such a fun name, you know? I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah. Wawa says to me, fun, not someone's going to eat me. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's true. I've just been waiting for a newsreader to go, what's all this hoo-ha about Wawa? <laughs> I think the saddest thing about Wawa is that his surname's actually Nee. <laughs> <laughs> what annoys me is they want to, apparently wanted to eat him because his parents died young. Yeah. I mean, you know, they shouldn't eat him. He might be poisonous. <laughs> well, this is the thing, because they think he's a witch. And, look, like, the thing we've, we've all overlooked is, what if he is a witch? I would have thought he was a warlock for a start. Well, they said he was a witch. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, you know, this is... There's your journalism, dodgy journalism right there. Yeah, I'm He's not a enough. witch, you know. One quick check, nah, it's a warlock. Good <laughs> <laughs> point. Good point. She'll do anything, though, won't she? Because there was, after the Steve Irwin, um, you know, story, there was her in khaki with a lizard oh, on her yeah. shoulder. But I couldn't tell where Naomi stopped and the lizard started. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not... I have defended... She's evil. You know, she, you know She's know not her. evil. I have met her. I've, really? And she's... Yes. And she's... I've met her. <laughs> So, and I may meet her again, and this is going to be awkward. Um, <laughs> I'd feel really bad about this if I hadn't been on Today Tonight this year on a story that said, when comedy goes too far. So I say, screw you. Uh, <laughs> our favourite mover and shaker this week is British author Faye Weldon, whose new book claims the secret to holding on to a husband is faking orgasms. 
Weldon claims when a woman insists on an orgasm, it makes a man less able to perform. Yeah, but so does bourbon and coke, and nobody's asking us to give that up. <laughs> the kind thing to do, according to Faye, is fake it, then leap out of bed and pour him champagne, telling him, you are so clever. <laughs> but most Australian men have dismissed this, saying it'd just wake him up. <laughs> if a woman really wants an orgasm, she can always get it in the laundry by sitting on the washing machine <laughs> while she washes her man's clothes. <laughs> laugh at that. That's <laughs> I've divided the room. Yeah. <laughs> Terry, you're lemon fresh. Men come first, don't they? Um, I, I, don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with a woman insisting on an orgasm. You know, as far as I'm concerned, it's kind of like an American Express card. Don't leave home without one. But... <laughs> have you ever faked it? Come on. Have you ever faked it, Terry? Joe, you know I'll be really honest. No, I haven't. Never I'm, in your I've life? Never, I can't see the point. Really? I can't see the point in doing it. And I also... It reckon... might make someone happy. Yeah, but... <laughs> True. <laughs> but I also So do you just that... go, stop, just stop? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 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 You, what, what do you do once they... Do you have a sign like a council worker? <laughs> stop, slow. No. Stop, well, stop, slow. Well, what do you do it like? What, Wrong you... way, go back. Okay. <laughs> you go... I'll tell you what I do. Yeah, right. They're at the top of the mountain. You go, I'm halfway. <laughs> you got a rope? <laughs> What well, do you I see, do? you've got to put a bit of the prices right into it, right? You've uh -huh. got to give it a bit of higher, lower, yeah. lower. Come on down! Right? You've just got to, you've, got to make, you've just got to make it fun. And what then... if they have come on down and then you're still going higher, lower? <laughs> what, if, what if you were doing prices right and they've gone fast money? <laughs> you know, that's a... What about if it they isn't. find out later on that you've been faking it for yeah. all that time? Yeah, it's confronting. I've been there and it is, is it? confronting. Really? <laughs> Because really? I would assume yeah, if, you, if you're going to fake it, then when you when you actually do yeah. orgasm, yeah. the guy's going to go, "Ooh, that was different. Yeah. Why was that one different?" It's go, "Oh, I don't know. I like, just I thought I'd do it differently." For... <laughs> I don't, I'm not even really that interested in like a girl faking it with me in bed. I would be really interested if my girlfriend would fake an interest in football during the finals. <laughs> that would make me happy. What about have you ever faked it? Yeah. Yeah. What? How do you talk us through it? it? Well, I mean, we're on television. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Well, yeah, you can fake it. Yeah, totally. Well, 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 because, well, I mean, if you're being safe. Like, if you're yeah. being right, safe, yes, okay. you, it's reasonably easy to, I'll you tell know, you what, you, when, so, when it's possible to fake it is the, <laughs> is the second time round, all right? The first time... Oh, yeah. OK, right. No need to fake it. Um, <laughs> they want you to back up and, um, yeah, sometimes it can be hard to catch the bus the second time. <laughs> <laughs> when you're catching the bus for the second time, as you, as you put it, that's when you go the, look at me, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you've got to put in the, oh. oh a little bit like, a little bit like you're on a roller coaster. Is that, um, is that, that your is orgasm? That, is that your orgasm? <laughs> Yeah, so, I don't know what was going on next door last night, but they seem to be starting a lawnmower over there. <laughs> oh, I would think that you'd had a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> well, that could get you to the end. Yeah. Anyway, it can happen. I'm impressed by Faye Weldon is 74. If mm. she's having sex with a man who's also 74, and he yeah, manages to... But if, look, a 74-year-old man just having sex deserves a bit of a, yay, good on you, and a glass of champagne, I think. Because <laughs> that's a big effort at that yeah, age. Yeah, not with the pills they've got these days. It obviously makes it a lot easier. For men of all ages. Um, <laughs> they make it go, oh! <laughs> 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 that sounds like you're talking from personal uh, experience, Dave. Have you uh, popped a little blue pill? I have in the past. Not anymore. Well, like, I'm a, ten minutes ago. No. <laughs> Those pills can be good if you're... I mean, I'm, this is ridiculous, I'm even saying this. But, uh, I tell you, like, when you're on the single scene and you're a nervous type of guy, <laughs> you don't want to disappoint a girl the first time because she ain't coming back, so I can tell you. So. Oh, once, that's she, cute. once she hears that wedding, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Later in the glass house, Queensland Premier Peter Beatty explains why it's rare for women to mistake him for Mel Gibson. I am sober 
and sensible. <laughs> Shane Warne tells why he prefers to go to bed with two things at once. You don't remember individual things. <laughs> and after five years of intensive research, George W. Bush announces his theory on how Al-Qaeda destroyed the Twin Towers. Probably using airplanes. <laughs> where a website has created a unique memorial to the crocodile hunter. It's a game called Terry Irwin's Revenge. <laughs> That's supposed to be Terry underwater shooting at stingrays. To get to the next level, you have to harpoon a white whale. Jermaine Greer. <laughs> what do we reckon uh, of the fallout from Steve Irwin? I just reckon all that stuff, it amazes me every time a public figure dies, how quickly that stuff appears. Like when Steve Irwin died, I think it was like about 11 o'clock or something, by one o'clock there were two jokes in my inbox on email and I just thought, who's, who's on to this? And so they're quickly? rubbish jokes too, aren't they? The stingray yeah. jokes. Yeah. Like he should have been wearing sunscreen. Yeah. Which is a pathetic joke. <laughs> People should have a life and not do it that early. Surely that's worse, to die, like the thing that, like, I've got a hair on my face. I'm easily distracted by myself. <laughs> it would be worse. Ring, 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 ring. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> no, I hope that, yeah, that's funny, you know. We're <laughs> having a great time over here. I've, I've given away a trade secret. You know, <laughs> Great. From now on, you're going to be walking down the street and instead of people yelling out, hey, Husey, they're going to yell out impressions of you having a good time. And that will take me back to a happy place. <laughs> Glasshouse hero of the week is Clinton Cossey from Auckland. With nothing more than a small engine and a two-seater couch, look what Clinton has created. <laughs> Evil in the world, but people like that exist. We're going to be okay. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that is, oh. That's what they call on the new inventors a five bong idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so funny. But just you know, the bit I like too is just his face. He's just. <laughs> you didn't think of it. There's not a lot going on in New Zealand. <laughs> I was having a bit of a, a chat to um, Greg Fleet the other day about a, a certain thing that we think is kind of mildly amusing. If, <laughs> if this could go yeah. anywhere. <laughs> um, Kiwis, if you rang a Kiwi sex line, yeah. I, just, I, just think the, I just think the whole idea of a Kiwi sex line is just awesome. Where they, we go, where she, you ring up and she goes, What you wearing up, bro? <laughs> Yes, that's right. I'm a dirty, dirty whore. Yeah. <laughs> Check exactly. me out. I'm in my knickers. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> It'd be more, you know, oh, you got the big dicker, cuz. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna use that big thing, huh? <laughs> you having, having sex with a guy from Once Were Worried. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to have a guy with tuts? <laughs> It's time to award the coveted Glasshouse Trophy, which this week is called... And the winner of the White Water Wet n Wild Puncture Repair Kit is a Russian bloke by the name of Ivan Ozipov, who won this year's Sex Doll Rafting Tournament near St Petersburg. <laughs> Every year, hundreds of rafters tackle a 1,200-metre course with nothing more than inflatable partners for buoyancy. The really disturbing thing are the boys sitting up the front of the dolls yelling, stroke, stroke, <laughs> stroke. Sadly, when Ivan got out of the water, this is true, he was disqualified after spectators saw signs of recent sexual activity on the swimmer's doll. Oh, don't. Oh. Who could have guessed a sex doll rafting competition would attract perverts? <laughs> So the trophy goes to the soggy sex sailor, Ivan Ozipov. And if you think the spectators look shocked, you should have seen the doll. <laughs> well, that's the way it is. 
Reese or Wednesday, September the 20th. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Reese. Oh, well, I was just going to say, you know what? When those... <laughs> <laughs> you know when those... When, they, when they're going down the river, yeah. you, you know what sound they make as they go past? What? When ning, 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 ning. <laughs> Tomorrow's headlines. According to the Hobart Mercury, migrants must face tests to become Aussies. Those who fail become Kiwis. <laughs> the Canberra Times claims Muslim clerics told to preach using English and Christianity. <laughs> the Territory News reports cannibal targets pup you and boy, but she got the wrong visa. <laughs> In Le Monde, Pope apologises for calling Muslims evil, meant to say Jews. <laughs> Good night. On Saturday.